Hey guys, it's Jeff and finally today is the day iOS 12.1.3. I am super, super pumped for two reasons. One, because we're finally getting this very buggy, this very frustrating version out of the way. And number two, we might be seeing iOS 12.2 either today or tomorrow, the first beta is coming out. But today, let's just focus on iOS 12.1.3. Uh, today, we're gonna be checking out what's new, what changes have been made, basically are any bugs gone um, that we were having before, and number three, Finally, like, should you be downloading this onto your iDevice? No, we're gonna be talking about like bug fixes, uh, battery life and everything like that, and if it's actually worth updating. So guys, let's just get right into it. Now, just before we get into the video, I wanted to give a huge shout out to NordVPN for sponsoring this update video. Make sure to go check them out via the link down below. It's by far the best and more importantly, the most reliable VPN service I've ever used. If you want to use it as well, make sure to use the code TECHREVIEW for a special discount. Okay, so first things first, I'm not going to lie to you and say that there are any new features. There were some basically UI changes, but I, don't consider those to be new features and I'll tell you why. The first one was made in the um, basically uh, app switcher, but only for people who bought their iPhones in China. So you might've heard about like all the Qualcomm business, Qualcomm was suing Apple, uh, basically for patent infringement and they were kind of in the right specifically in China. There was an animation for the app switcher that basically was patented by Qualcomm and Apple did in fact change that in beta two of iOS 12.1.3. And let me remind you, that was technically the first beta of 0.1.3. So that was like one of the changes, but for most of you who aren't in China, uh, that will not apply to you at all. Now, the next change was really an enhancement on the iPhone XR and the performance. So basically the iPhone XR does not have forced 3D touch, but you can tap and hold to activate a like forced 3D touch experience. So basically Apple kind of enhanced that experience and made it a little bit more real to life for what it would be on an iPhone XS, XS Max, or any iPhone with force 3D touch. So for, for those of you that have the iPhone XR, you will be experiencing a much smoother experience with a kind of like mock-up of force 3D touch, kind of like a uh, fake 3D touch. Um, you'll be seeing like a little bit more fluidity with that. I didn't really notice it on the iPhone 5S or any other iPhones. It was specifically on the iPhone XR. Now, the next thing that we're going to be talking about really pertains to a major bug fix. And ever since the iPhone XS and XS Max came out, we've had a lot of issues with those devices, specifically on iOS 12. And it kind of sucks because we haven't been able to basically go back and downgrade to iOS 11 because that's not possible. iOS 12 was specifically made for the newer devices. So we've kind of been in this loop where there's been more and more issues each time a new feature is released for the iPhone XS, XS Max, and iPhone XR. Now, specifically, we've had a lot of connectivity issues, and that really all started when dual SIM came to be. So when basically Verizon, AT&T, and Sprint started introducing dual SIM support, we started experiencing a lot of connectivity issues, and I personally experienced some of them. Now, I never experienced any LTE issues where basically LTE would kind of just not work at all on, the, on my device at all. I really had Wi-Fi and connectivity issues with Bluetooth. Now, basically Wi-Fi would cut off and it would switch over to LTE, so I'd be using data even if I was at home or work. And then with Bluetooth, I would be listening to my Beats headphones and they would just randomly shut off and then all of a sudden reconnect and my music would start playing again. Super weird issues, but they're really, really frustrating because they happened a lot. Now, a lot of other people, a lot of other users, you can go search the Reddit post. Basically, they were experiencing connectivity issues with LTE, which was super dangerous. Basically, LTE was not working on their device. There was no fix. It would just stop working all of a sudden and they could barely make calls, um, search the web or anything like that. It was an absolute mess. So Apple, through the beta process, has been continuously trying to fix this issue. And with each beta, some people experience that the issue goes away and some people have experienced that it actually pops up. So basically Apple were fixing issues in some betas and creating more issues in others. And it was just a super frustrating process, specifically because users didn't know what to do. And basically, 
Throughout this entire process, I think Apple has learned quite a bit. And finally, with this latest release, they have fixed the issue. I'm not experiencing any connectivity issues whatsoever. I am running dual SIM on my phone as we speak right now, and I'm experiencing no issues with that, no drop in the second line or first line. It's all working very seamlessly. Now, the last piece that we really have to talk about is performance. So you don't want to be updating to iOS 12.1.3 if performance is bad. So we'll go ahead and talk about that. Now, battery performance has gotten a lot better from iOS 12.1.1 and 12.1.2. I was experiencing not so great battery life in those two versions. And in iOS 12.1.3, I'll admit in the first two betas, they weren't that great, but in beta four, it really started to shine. I'm actually really enjoying the battery life right now. So guys, if you're worried about battery life, that is not going to be an issue. Now, as far as performance goes, I'm not experiencing any issues specifically on the iPhone XS and XS Max, but I have experienced on the iPhone 5S and 6S that we are experiencing a little bit slower of performance, um, even from iOS 12.1.2. And now I, I was giving it a chance on iOS 12.1.3 to kind of speed back up, but I'm not really experiencing that. So I don't know what's going on with those two specific devices, but if you are on those two devices, beware you might be experiencing a little bit of a slowdown. Now, my experience is different from others, so don't take what I say like so seriously because every experience of iOS is different on every single device. So if you, if you wanna take that chance, go right ahead. Now, the next thing that we're going to be talking about is benchmarks, and that really kind of um, gives a, a precursor as to what you're going to be seeing in regards to performance. So specifically with my iPhone XS Max, here are the results that I got. So for the CPU score on the single core, we got a score of 4,803 and for the multi-core, 10,870. And those two results are pretty good um, within the margin of error from iOS 12.1.2. Now, as far as the GPU or compute score, we got a 21,438 and that is a really good score. So that should translate into a very flu fluid experience on iOS and you shouldn't be experiencing any slowdowns or anything like that. So guys, that was iOS 12.1.3. The official version is dropping today. As far as like my experience on the betas, it was like hit or miss, but as far as the final release, we're really seeing good results right now. So no new features, unfortunately. A lot of bug fixes though, that have really solved a lot of issues, even from iOS 12.1.1. And thirdly, performance is good, battery life is good. So in my personal opinion, as far as updating, I would say that there's no hurt in updating. So if you you are wondering, should you update? Like a lot of you ask in the comment section, should I update to iOS 12.1.3? I'd say go for it. If you want to basically wait and see if this brings any major issues in the next couple days, then maybe just hold off for now. But anyways, guys, thank you for watching this update video of iOS 12.1.3. Make sure to get subscribed because you do not want to forget iOS 12.2 betas are bound to be released either today or maybe even tomorrow, which is Wednesday. You do not want to miss that. I'm sure there was a ton of new features and changes coming in that update. So again, thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video.